building. That's where the stuff is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sea level. And if everybody does, will remain in their seat, I'm sorry, will remain in their seats until we come to a full and complete stop, and then we will let you out to your open. Let me have your attention, please. We have a full tr Yeah, I know. As we go into this curve here, if everybody looks off to the left side of the train, you will get a glimpse of Clear Creek. We will be crossing over Clear Creek four times in our descent to Devil's Gate. The only stub and branch line from Denver, the railroad was very profitable in the early days, bringing miners, their families, and supplies to our mountain communities, and taking the rich ores back to Denver and Golden to be processed. This continued until the early depressions of the early 1890s, when the price of silver dropped so low that nobody could buy it and make a profit at it. At that time, tourism took over as the main source of revenue for the railroad. soon I can just see the tracks that's why I started this whole rolling stock is our morning star second to our covered gondolas and the very last car is a flat wooden car that dates back to the late 1800s as the fame of the loop spread through the country and even the world Thousands of people came to ride on what was considered a scenic and engineering marvel of the 19th century. The heavy tourism continued until, the 19, until 1927, and that's when our story would have ended there, as it did for many of Colorado's early mountain railroads, except in the 1960s, the State Highway Department began planning to build a new interstate right up the middle of our valley. This would have ruined our railroad grade in the mining history this valley contains, and the Colorado Storkel Society felt that it should be preserved. So they got together with the Department of Transportation and came up with a new plan to build an interstate on the side of Republican Mountain where you drive it now. In 1973, the Colorado Historical Society got the U.S. Navy Seabees out here to help them reconstruct the track, and by 1975, they were completed and running their first passenger train, and we have run every year since. The forest around you is only about 120, 130 years old. This is due to clear cutting in the mining era. So when the miners came through, they needed wood to build mine supports, to build their homes, and also to heat their homes. So they clear cut this area, and it kind of looked a little like a moonscape. The brown tree 
trees you see out there, it is not due to a forest fire. Those trees are to have to get attacked by a pine beetle that we're having problems with in the state of Colorado and several other states through the West. through this curve, and if you look to the left side of the train and down towards the front, you will get a glimpse of 12 or 3 as it pulls us down the mountain. As we do clear these trees here, if you look off to the right, you will get a glimpse of the Devil's Gate Bridge and a little bit of Georgetown in the background. This little ball ship area here off to the left side was where the miners built the little baseball field. On any given Sunday, you can come up here by the miners and their families having picnics and playing a little bit of baseball. You can say this was the minor leagues. The tracks we were riding on today are a narrow gauge track. That means our rails are only three feet apart. We're at the um, down in Denver and other lowland areas, they use a narrow gauge, uh, I'm sorry, a standard gauge system where their tracks are four foot, eight and a half inches apart. you have not taken the mind to it, if you look out the left side of the train, you know some folks that just got off the train gathered in front of a small wooden portal on the side of the mountain. That portal is the entrance to the Everett Silver Mine, the system mine, the Lebanon Mine, which is the system mine, 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 the system the silver. Back then, that was a dollar an ounce. And give, giving Georgetown the nickname the Silver Queen in the Rockies. In a moment. In a moment, on the right side. Now, any curve from what you see the lower track of the loop on the downhill side of the train. For those 
technology and after that it is going to live. It's a survey of answer to a problem getting a railroad from Georgetown to Silverwell. You see the two towns are only two air miles, miles apart but different in elevation of over 600 feet. Had the track been laid up the floor of the valley, the grade would have been in excess of 6%. Far too steep for a normal regional railroad operation. Get away from this, the survey is laid out around to double back or looped over and stuff. This lab, this allowed the average grade of the line to be held at three and a half percent. Although it increased the distance from old Georgetown station, this hill was one of the four and a half miles. Only four or five locations in the world where they have made a loop as a way of getting out to gain an elevation. We are the only one that does not have a tunnel where everything is out in the open. That was the warning whistle, which means we are about to go out on the Devil's Gate Viaduct, since the bridge spans them outside. Now, I'm not squeamish about looking down at the center of the track. You will be 100 feet above Clear Creek and 75 feet from the lower loop. loop. To the right of the train, you will get a nice view of Georgetown. To the left of the train is our double building area.